Good afternoon to you all. Unfortunately, my Catalan, uh, it's Bona Tarda. Uh, my German, um, sorry, my Arabic is a little bit better. I would like to apologize because this morning has been quite stressful for me. I couldn't be here. Uh, <laughs> the reason being welling. <laughs> Our flight has been cancelled at the very last minute, so thank you very much for your understanding and patience. Patience to you all, the audience and the organizers. And a special thanks to Mr. Uriol Lopez and Lourdes Pradas for their kind invitation. It's always a pleasure to come back here to Barcelona. My speech today, as usual, we start with a sort of letter to Santa. We, some of the objectives uh, are reached, some others are never. My idea, at least, is to give you a broader sort of spectrum so that you can, uh, I can welcome research fellows here to carry on with a few research lines. But um, it's hard sometimes to offer specific figures and conclusions. First of all, I would like to express a few of the um, reasons why um, uh, some of these Arabs from the Mashrik and the Maghreb actually wanted to join the brigades. And the idea we have is that totum revolutum, quite homo homogeneous was where some ideas have been forgotten about. I would like to analyze the Mag Maghreb or Moroccan actually participation in some military actions, some operations, some battalions, etc. Specifically all about their ideology. And it's quite paradoxical when it comes to this collective imaginary of those Moros, of those Moors, those Moroccan forces uh, by Franco, which used any sort of violence, burning and annihilating. But hey, let's remember there were Moroccan guys in the International Brigade. It's a paradox indeed, but there were a series of motivations and reasons that actually had these Moroccan people working on one side or the other. And I would like to talk about Arab and specifically Moroccan soldiers because not only we've spoken about the international perspective of this conflict, it's the idea that you were not only coming to work only for liberties in Spain but against uh, fascism in Spain but also to, def to defend liberties all over the globe. I would like to change also our idea about the Arab world, and I would like to highlight and question the negative idea uh, that is uh, portrayed on the Moorish uh, person. This is my Santa, my letter to Santa. When it comes to literature, we don't have actually a lot, so I would like to welcome research fellows to Lourdes Lidia, the Sibring project. It's wonderful what they're doing. I have been uh, checking your sources for us, your uh, reference source, uh, a wonderful one for people studying this topic. And uh, here, I would love you to encourage to carry on and let's feed e and help each other because we have a long path to walk. Now, some work that is on post-prod uh, at the moment by Amal Ramses, you come from far away, the film by this Egyptian director. I don't want to spoil you uh, the, the story. This is a, a great film, Anas, for biblio bibliographical work, Abdelatif Ben Salem, a Tunisian colleague. He was one of the first researchers who was interested uh, to talk about about the Arab volunteers and Yaura de Castells, the classic one. Uh, the great article by Porafuy, who was doing field work in the Soviet archives and which has offered us a great list to consult. Kafha, Mustafa, is one of the great uh, unknown authors, but his work is very, very interesting. One of the Arabism, Pedro Martinez Montavez, who did highlight already the great uh, left-wing uh, commitment 
of Arabs towards the fight uh, and uh, defense of uh, democracy in Spain. Nieves Paradela, one of the best translators, who's carried out the first uh, trial to talk about Najat Siddiq. And I will read a few fragments about his his career, his work, and of course the brigadier, um, it, it was presented in a man in Jordan. He presented his PhD, which is unknown in uh, Spanish. Right, this is basically the relatively scarce bibliography which we have so far. This actually makes our participation very scarce, very little. These are some figures, and I would like to mention sources. Uh, but this, let me highlight, it's a word that still has to be reanalyzed. The origin of the Arab brigaders is the problem, the main problem in order to actually find out the exact figures because in the database both terms are included so it's quite easy to do specific searches. If we're looking for Palestinians, for example, we find uh, Jewish or Arab origin Palestinians or um, people from Algier, again, could be from Spanish origin, etc. This is why I would like to highlight the easy to use database because we face many difficulties at the beginning of our work. And from up to the around 1,000, again, take it with a pinch of salt, we estimate that around half of these 1,000 people could die on Spanish soil. Again, it's not 100% validated information. What happens? Well, this participation has been ignored in academia in the past. For example, masters uh, done in 2007, 2013. We see that some stereoty stereotypes are spoken about in the in the. Um, it's not spoken about uh, the participation of uh, North African volunteers. Also, a sort of closeness relationship um, with the origin countries was established, and this propaganda work was very important uh, for the Arab world. So, it is uh, still a sort of whole black hole that historiography needs to to tackle. And again, a few data uh, that don't ex either doesn't exist or it's really hard to validate. Again, it helps for these stereotypes to be uh, to be chronic. You know, Ran and Rain, for example, this great source when it comes to analyzing the Jewish brigadist in Palestine. It's true that his information that he has managed to to double to prove, you know, highlights again this uh, the fact that maybe we do have a few information, but in some other cases information is not analyzed in depth. For example, Alvarez in his work, he lists the countries, he just says Algier and Morocco. So um, we are sort of uh, a baby, you know, if you allow me the, the metaphor, we're beginning to do this, this analysis. One of the first authors who has publicly talked about this is uh, Aldeb Lajid Manjilun, a specialist in the Spanish protectorate in Morocco. And when he launched this idea in an academic arena, arena the surprise was incredible because basically nobody knew about it. And afterwards, uh, Ben Salem, Kafka's work, Sanchez Ruano, where uh, one of the few testimonies by a Moroccan brigadier is included, and also the references I have already mentioned. 
Uh, among them, CIS is one of the best sources to because it helps us compare what it has been done up to the moment. I don't want to establish a too simplistic division of West and non-Western countries, but for you to understand me, I have only been able to find a testimony, which you can see here, Spar y Sierra de Teruel, in the Teruel mountain range, where Oh, only it's spoken about one one uh, one person who participates in the Arab world and North African combatants specifically. So, uh, Amal Ramsi's documentary it's the first one that has been devoted to this participation. La directora que um, this film director, who actually tra was trained in Spain partly, knew about this Palestinian who participated in the Spanish International Brigade thanks to the reading of the works by Paradera and Borafull, amongst others. So we have a first example of that uh, lack of knowledge in the Arab world has been solved by the reading and this analysis in Spain. So she decides to get in touch with uh, this person's family. She reads a little bit more about the personal and uh, work career of Najat Sekri. And she interviews uh, Sekri's two uh, daughters, one in Moscow, one in Athens. And she creates this corpus so that she can develop the project. It was funded by the Arab uh, Foundation in Granada, and uh, this director had to launch a crowdfunding campaign online, which has uh, delayed the post-production up until uh, this year, 2018. So hopefully in the Cartago Film Festival from the 3rd to the 10th of uh, December this year, uh, it will be, it will be uh, presented, it will be shown. Why Serki? Because we have his memories, which have been partially translated by Nieves Paradela. It is true that we can question a few chapters. We have some data that historically are not true or are a little bit incomplete, but the importance of Najati Serpi is that he represented the Arab community in the brigades and he did Republican propaganda so that Arabs who walked on Franco's files for them to join the Republican files and at the same, or the Republican troops. And at the same time, this is the paradox, he wanted to convince the Republicans that it was worthwhile trying this propaganda and that not all Moorish were on the Franco side. And this second task is really giving him a bigger headache. This is what he tells in his memoirs. Born in Jerusalem, uh, he was a um, journalist and he got in touch with the local uh, Communist Party when he was working at the post office. So he became an activist and he was prosecuted under the British mandate. Finally, he went to Moscow and in 1936, he moved to Spain to be in charge of the propaganda anti-fascism. Uh, through Polvo, Girona, he accessed um, Spain as a volunteer for five months. He, he was in the Madrid front, on the Madrid front, and the sentence that can summarize his ideas, and it's quite similar to the Yugoslav, to the Yugoslav and American veterans, is that he came here to fight in favor of democracy. He says, I'm an Arab volunteer, but I came to Madrid to uh, fight for freedom, to defend Damascus in Guadalajara, Jerusalem in Cordoba, Baghdad in Toledo, El Cairo in Cadiz, and Tetuan in Burgos. I need to read what he said when he arrived in Barcelona. He said, I got to the wonderful and magnificent Barcelona, the capital of Catalonia, uh, of a great civilization. I started walking the streets with orange trees blossoming. 
the class of trees that we know of as Abu Sophia. Uh, they seem to be illuminated with red lights. And all of a sudden, I came across some militians. Uh, their boss uh, came to me, and he spoke to me in Spanish and said, why don't you join us? Smiling, I answered back in French because I was really enthusiastic. And I said, I'm an Arab volunteer, and I'm here to defend Damasco in Guadalajara, Jerusalem in Córdoba, Baghdad in Toledo, El Cairo in Cadiz, and Tetuan in Burgos. And he said that with the typical way of speaking, this wonderful way of speaking they have. In, on his face, he seemed to be surprised and very happy. And in a very uh, broken French, he said, are you truly Arabian? Are you, um, are you really a Moor, a Moorish? They are, that's not possible. These people are forcing, raping our women. The, Moroc the people from Morocco that are against um, the Republic are offending with, its beha with their behavior the Islam, and they only represent themselves. They have been misled. The army of, uh, of the Popular Front um, have, has misled them, and they were really surprised at my words and started shaking their, uh, their heads as if they could not believe what, were, what they were hearing or as if it, they, was doubt, they were doubting on my words. This is the typical stereotype of, you know, the Moor, the Moorish that was still prevalent at the time. He published in um, media like El Mundo Obrero, for example, and he was sent to Córdoba to try to convince from the trenches those National Front Arabs to switch um, to the Republican um, troops. And he still insists that uh, the uh, well, that it was incompatible with Islam. Um, after a terrible failure, he decides that for propaganda to be um, really more successful, he needed to go to Argel, to the Argel, to, to avoid that at the point of origin of the recruitment, that is to say Morocco, they can um, have all these people going to fight against the Republic. But the French did not allow him to go there, and eventually the, they, he had to go to Damascus, but he continued alerting um, in the media about the dangers of fascism. To this personal career, there's also a drama, because a dramatic ending, because when he came back, he started getting in trouble, and he started having some differences with the Communist Party and the Soviet authorities to the extent that he his daughter, Julia, who was in an orphanate in Moscow, she, he could not see her until 25 years later. So the, the family started to move around. They tried to come back to Jerusalem, but it was impossible because there was, it was the, there was the Israeli um, occupation. And they ended up in another civil war or an intervention. Inter and finally, they ended up in Athens, and that is the story that is told in the documentary film through the um, testimonials of the two daughters uh, who remember uh, Sirki. Okay, quantifying. Um, and in this case, I need to talk about the sources that we're familiar with. Because the international brigades um, um, had these people participating, but they were also in the aviation and in other, other tasks. Um, so there is a problem. As I was saying, we, when it comes to the origin, we really need to understand source by source where these people really came from. And it is especially complex in the, in the case of people from Maghreb, because uh, Borathul, Boraful, for example, offers a list of 89 people who are considered to be French, but within them, among them, there are many people from Morocco, Argel, or Tunisia, and we have not been able to classify these people yet.
And it is true, though, that most of them uh, come from Maghreb, from Morocco, and it's obvious, of course, first of all, because of the big uh, presence in France and it, their link to the left wing communist movements. So, people from Morocco, from Argel, from Morocco, if the authorities did not allow to have propaganda, of course, from the French protectorate in Morocco, it was not easy either to counterattack um, this enlisting of people in the other side, people from Tunisia, Palestina, Egypt, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Saudi Arabia. And please allow me to say how painful it is that Palestinian, Syrian, Lebanese, they came here to fight in favor of democracy. And it's so painful to me, so hurtful to see how they are now. So the recovery of their memory of these brigaders should also make us think of this participation in democracy. And we all have to repent upon what we are doing right now in the present in the other crisis that we're facing. There was an ideology background that has some connections with colonialism. We're talking about mandates, French mandates in Syria, for example. Iraq was formally independent, but with a pro-British um, policy colonialism in Maghreb, colonialism in Morocco, and we also had the influence of the non-intervention committee, and as you know, it was some questionable, and at the same time, and from the ideology point of view, there was a huge emergence of left-wing movements in the Arab Arabic world. Of course, not all political views are religious. There are, in these countries, there are worker movements, there are left-wing movements. They have always been there, and they're still there in the Arab world. We have some um, writers from Syria and Palestine who published, at the time, some books against fascism in general and Spanish uh, fascism in particular. Of course, they're not translated yet. And let me give you some examples from Iraq, from the Seedbreed database, database where I could find photos. So we have Arab family, middle class, with a training in Massachusetts, for example. That's one of them. A member of the Communist Party, general directorate, uh, some articles published in favor of the um, Palestinian cause. And he was arrested because of his uh, political Activities. From his exile in Paris, he became a member of the Lincoln Brigade and fought in the Ebro battle. And finally, he was sent to the United States. Another member from Iraq um, with Hebrew family, there's a big contrast. And he, of course, there are people uh, like this. And he came from Argentina. And same thing, he ended up participating in the same brigade, and he ended up being sent back home. We have some examples from Palestinian members of the Communist Party, like Najat Sitrik. But we also have Ali Abdel Khaled, um, who's a blue collar and who was imprisoned in Palestine because of his political idea. He w was injured in the Teruel battle, and and then he, de he died at, ho at the hospital. And then we have another one who was a member of the worker movement. Hafiz, for example, uh, joined the French CGT, and at the end he, was di he disappeared in the Ebro battle. Another man from Egypt, again, this time linked to the British Communist Party. He um, was study he studied in Cambridge. The strange thing in this case is that he was supposed to be to have disappeared, but he ended up appearing in on a boat going to the United to the United Kingdom, but he ended up deserting. Okay, people from Argelia, from the Argel, we have all these people, um, these 500 
uh, volunteers um, who created all these links with the uh, trade union movements. One of the most well-known is Mohammad Belaidi, who became a machine gun expert, and he participated in this defense of, of the international brigades. And he is the one who appears in the documentary film that I mentioned before. He's the only witness that could be found on the Arab uh, brigadier presence in Spain. We also have Ra we also have Rabah Wisidum, who was a, a member of this battalion that was mixed, and he he also died in the Ebro battle. Okay, what happens with the participation from brigaders from Morocco? The figures are really difficult to ascertain. We have been working a lot, but we cannot find a word, a um, figure that has evidence. Castells, for example, mentions 200 volunteers from Morocco. But Sancho Ruano says again 200. But most came from France, and among them, about 10, between 3 and 10 from Tanger. Tanger, let's remember, there's an international institute, uh, um, statute there, sorry, with some uh, legal characteristics um, that are very different. We also have some Jewish um, people and people enrolled from Marseille as representatives of these people coming from the, metropo from, from the metropolis. Um, Hashmesh Hassan, who was sent to Bordeaux and ended up in danger. We also have um, people who were permanently, more or less, um, permanently living in Spain. Um, some of them played a very important role, like Muhammad al Hassan al Wazani. But this information that Brathun says is questioned by Path. And not all historians agree, because this man, Muhammad al Hassan Wazami, according to the evidence, did not play an active role in favor of the international brigades, but he fought for the maintenance of the republic and the democratic regime in Spain, but not in particular, he was not a member of the international brigades according to some historians. There were some people who deserted, that is true. Maybe it was for secret efforts, or maybe it was because what they said in Africa was not true, and then among the Curious uh, testimonials, we have a letter of an Australian um, um, volunteer, Cormac McCarthy, uh, please excuse me for my English, where Palmer says that he said the following. I have a colleague who's a young Moor who came with us in October with four more colleagues and um, some equipment. So even in the data databases, we should explore because we don't have all the information. This is a sample of the propaganda uh, that we're given to the, on the front, and it comes from the um, Hispanic Moroccan Association that was created by when he came to Spain with the two goals that I mentioned before, achieving the Moroccan um, desertion, but also making Spanish people realize that the Moroccan were not a side of the conflict on themselves, but that they had been forced to fight. And this has been um, it, this has been studied. There are many colleagues who have realized that a good part of the people enrolled were coerced, they were threatened, they ha they were in a way um, economically forced because at El Rif there was a huge famine and of course some of them ended up coming to Spain to fight because of these problems they had. So. Okay, I will skip this 
um, slide, but I'll now go to the association that failed on its task. But the most interesting thing is that the stereotypes that Republicans had about um, Arab people are still there in the uh, in a journalist of a Russian newspaper that um, referred to the stealing to as exclusively done by Moroccans, when we know that this was not the case, that it was not only the people from Morocco who, may, who did all these crimes and who used all these tactics at the wartime. By means of conclusion, I can tell you that the importance of um, projects like Sibrin and Amal Ramsey's initiatives are um, important because there is also the interest of researchers and both arca archivists, Arab Arabists, is historians, we're all necessary, have to join our projects in interdisciplinary projects so that we can shed some light on a topic that is absolutely important those days. And of course, archives like Voraful, are, um, this has proven that archives are basic with all the difficulties that are there, access problems, catalogization problems, conservation or preservation issues, and so on. Um, Argelian and Palestinian were the m main um, brigaders, but there were Arab brigaders in the Spanish Civil War, and this proves the ideology um, variety or plurality in the Arab world. It is therefore important to review our stereotypes and the stereotypes we have about the Moor. These Moorish, Moor stereotypes have to be fought against. Thank you very much for your attention.